My name is Sherry Carell, and I've been a part of ISCA for what, since 2000. And this is a piece I did um, as um, a reflection of what's happening in the world today, and it's called Seeking Asylum. And it's a rather dark piece, but um, I find it a pretty powerful because I've used um, figures that are trying to find of, of, of seeking asylum, and along with that, I've used a roof shingle to, to symbolize a home. And I often work in tar and tires and burlap, and this, this tire is, or this tar is part of the whole overarching ambiance of seeking a home for travelers and finding a, a place to call their own. So that's what that's all about. I'm Elisa and um, I'm a first time exhibitor. And um, I grew up in the New York City area and I moved to Michigan 20 years ago. And when I saw that this event was happening in Michigan, I was excited to be a part of it. Um, during COVID, Painting is what kept me alive. My process, my experimenting, my having fun with art was an escape so that I didn't have to worry about what was gonna happen and what the future held. And when I paint, I think a lot about time, what's happened in the past, what's gonna happen in the future. So the title of this piece is Go Back, Move Forward. And during the um, quarantine, I spent a lot of time thinking about some of the things in my past going back, the loss of my parents, the loss of the house that I grew up in, things like that, and then what's gonna be next? What's gonna be my forward without knowing what that was gonna look like? Um, and um, we call that a liminal space, and, um, and that's kind of how I make my art. COVID was one huge giant in-between space for everybody, so I'm just thankful for my process and my art making and the way it got me through. So I'm Gary Eldridge. I'm an um, artist from Lowell, Michigan. Um, this is my piece of art. It's uh, the titled In Dreams. And it's a piece um, that I actually wrote the poem for first and then the visual kind of came to me after afterwards. And so, um, I've worked for a number of years, too many years that I want to <laughs> admit to, as a commercial illustrator. And during that time, I am developed a technique of adding three-dimensional objects to my artwork so that I would kind of stand out from the crowd. So, I, so people, when they saw my work, they would know that it was created by me. And that helped me a lot in my commercial career, and I've continued on with my fine art career now. So this is my first year at the, as a member of ISEA. I joined earlier this, this year and um, saw that this competition was coming up. So I created this piece specifically, although I had written the poem years ago, I created the piece specifically for this competition. Uh, and I, for my experimental part of it all, because I've worked with a lot of dimensional things over the years, but um, I added this motion detector up here, which when you come up closer to it, it lights up. It's already gotten my motion, so it knows that we're here. It's Patty Sevensma. I'm president of the board of directors for the International Society of Experimental Artists. And my piece in the exhibit is called Peering In, and it is collaboration. The collaboration is with my mentor who has passed away, my dear friend who has gone through all kinds of heart problems this year, and myself. So, when my mentor died, her name is Loretta Sailors, and when she died, 
Her daughter had us over and she gave some of us work that she had never finished. And so the painting in the background of the work is actually her painting, but it was never finished. So then the pieces, the collage pieces, are called Citrusol Papers. And two years ago, Velvet and I made papers like this together to give away to the artists for the symposium that year. And of course, I got some too in my bag and I never used them until I saw the painting. And I thought, that's perfect, so I know what to do. And then my mainstay is photography. So the little photographic images in there are, are mine. And when I put it together, it just, it's peering in. Kimberly Gill. I'm from Byron Center, Michigan. And this is my piece, No More Red Dresses. It's a painting I did um, after reading about the missing and murdered indigenous women. Um, decided to put together a piece um, with collage and burlap. It's called No More Red Dresses because um, there was a campaign done a few years back, um, especially in art project that was done with red dresses representing all the over 6,000 women who were either murdered or missing. And so my piece is about no more red dresses. I did put a lot of um, missing um, flyers that were uh, out, there's pictures of red dresses. I have maps of where um, a lot of the women were abducted. My name is Haley Joseph from the Grand Rapids area. And this is my little piece. It's called Harryingen, something like that. It's a Dutch name because the text is a Dutch text. So I created this little book and the stand out of encaustic wax and cardboard. I took a Dutch commentary that was from possibly 1730 something. And with incense, I burnt holes in the pages of the commentary. And then had I, I printed images from a, our family, from my husband's side of the family, on silk so that you can see through them and stitch them on. I also stitched on very thin sheets of mica stone and took Indian ink and touched the edges so that the ink would seep through. I created the stand, and this is zebra wood, but this right here is blood wood. And so I thought that would show about the bloodline that goes through our ancestry. This is supposed to symbolize memories of our ancestors and how they're passed down through our bloodline, which is why I chose um, Harry Ingen, the title, because it means memories in Dutch. I'm Liz Ahrens, this is my husband Neil Ahrens, and we live in Harbor Springs, Michigan, and we were the co-jurors for ISCA's 30th annual exhibition, which is opening today at Mission Point Resort on Mackinac Island. So together we juried this show back in April online, and so today it's been really interesting seeing the pieces in person. Yeah, it, it's, it's always a struggle to in, in say interpolate, I don't know if that's really a word, but to look at an image on a screen and try to imagine how it would be in real life and then jury that into a show, it, giving each image the, the most fair shot is everybody else. So if you ever enter a show like this and it's going to be juried online, 
make sure your pictures are the best you can possibly take. Every monitor looks different, right? Every color adjustment yeah. looks different. So truly, really good photos are really important today. I mean, that's just how we're, when you jury a show. The, the, but the awards are typically judged in person. So we went through the hundreds of entries for the show, and then we took the body of, we selected the body of work, which is very difficult because you've got artists coming from all directions, all media, and we try to create a show out of the, out of the whole body that was entered. Then once the work is hung and installed, a judge comes through and then they see the works in person. They can see brush stroke, they can see technique, they can see everything from composition that we could see in a two-dimensional field, but they really get to see it in person. So then the awards judge, which is separate from us, then they come through and then they select the awards, which will be announced tonight at the, uh, at the opening. Well, guys, thanks for joining me. I'm here with Dennis and Patty Sevensma from ISEA. She's the president of the board of directors. And Patty, why don't you uh, introduce our guest here and tell us a little about what's going on? Well, I'd like to introduce Dennis, and I hope I say your last name correctly. Sialti? Is sure. that right? That is good. Yes. It's good. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Dennis is going to, or Dennis received the Best of Show Gracie Award for the International Society of Experimental Artists 30th Annual um, Exhibition. It's an open exhibit, which means it's open to more than membership. It's open to anyone to enter. And um, this year we had uh, 227 people enter, um, 83 are exhibiting. And 83 is the number that was juried for awards and Dennis won the top award. So um, he receives a nice check and he also receives a sculpture. Our, um, the Nautilus is our logo and it's part of our logo and his sculpture is, well, a sculpture of a Nautilus uh, fossil. So he'll be receiving that after we take the, the show down at the end of October. So Dennis, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from? And um, thank you. Thanks for being here. Yes, thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm originally from Chicago. And about five years ago, I moved to Louisville, Kentucky. Um, that's where I'm at right now. Dennis, could you describe your piece for us? I'm going to show it on screen right now for the viewers. So tell us a little about what we're looking at right now. Right, I usually um, start with no fixed idea. I like to work on two or three at the same time uh, so I can kind of work back and forth and get ideas and they, they usually start to develop on their own. This piece here, um, I started with a kind of a textured background and then I have an altered book, some puzzle parts and um, some paper that I glued on there. And then I also started to draw some lines <clears throat> and then it started to turn into the shape of a house. And uh, that's where I got the name of the dwelling, for the uh, title of it. It was very cool. It, definitely a standout piece from the very beginning, at least for me, walking around the gallery mm -hmm. and not even knowing anything at this point, who the contenders were or the top 10 or anything like that. But I found myself staring at your piece a lot and uh, just, definitely stood out to me. So could you tell me a little bit about your fine art background, how long you've been doing this? Is it something you've done maybe professionally for a while or how that? Uh, yes, well, even as it, when I was a kid, I used to find uh, found objects like on the ground and kind of put them together. Then later on, um, I went to uh, Columbia College in Chicago. And when I was there, I took some courses at the Art Institute. And uh, I studied under Phillips Branson and Ed Paskey. And then I did an apprenticeship with John Conner. And I did some uh, much larger, larger welded steel sculptures and cast bronze. 
And then after that, after a couple of years, I went back to graduate school. I got a master's in fine art where I studied with George Cohen and Ed Pasquita. So I, it's been kind of ongoing, <laughs> my adult life, yes. <laughs> wow, that's great. So I love asking this question. It always provokes an interesting answer. Why do you do what you do? Uh, I really like, I must have liked the process even when I was a child, because I used to like to put things together uh, that are not similar and try to make something out of them to give some sort of context so into the uh, spatial context. Right, so, that's neat. And now bringing it back to ISEA, uh, what are your thoughts on the International Society of Experimental Artists, that group, and how long have you been a part of it? Uh, I was a part a few years ago, but then my uh, it elapsed, and then I just recently rejoined, which was nice. <laughs> and um, I really like the group. It's a very good organization, very good artists, a lot of real nice work, and uh, it's a very, very good society. Good. So you'd recommend it to a friend, I'm assuming. Oh, for then. sure. Yes. Yes, I would. Yeah. Good. So what are you planning to do next? Any big uh, projects in the works yet? or? Uh, mostly, I used to do kind of smaller collage type work. I'm trying to do a uh, larger now on wooden panels, uh, some more figurative work again uh, because of the space I have. Uh, that's kind of where I'm moving forward to right now. I like to work larger. <laughs> Got it. Got it. But, All right. Uh, Patty, what did we miss? Anything we need to touch on here? Well, I just, um, he actually touched on the one question I had because <laughs> when, uh, after the juror was done, I walked around with him and let him personally reflect on the pieces that he was choosing for whatever he was choosing them for. And he, he was absolutely fascinated with the fact that your piece was so architectural on one hand and yet three-dimensional on the other and how you, how you completed all the lines to make it work together as an architectural piece, um, even in a three-dimensional space. So uh, he was really, really impressed with that. And I just wondered, you actually answered that when you talked about the piece. So. Um, unless you have any more to add after me saying that, but he was just enthralled with your piece. Well, I think it's interesting when other people look at your work and they bring their, uh, you know, their life into the work, and then you um, they analyze it. You you always get more back yourself than actually what you put in. Sometimes it's it's very interesting. Another thing also I miss is that some I used to have people give me objects and I would put them in my work. And then if the piece was in a show, they would come up to me and say, oh, look, at, there's my that little object I gave you, which kind of made them part of the work too, which was, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that's, that's really, really neat. All right. Thank you for coming, Dennis. I know this was not, not an easy thing for you to do, but I really, really appreciate this. And congratulations again. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you both. Well, I was dragging my feet on it, but I was encouraged and been very happy to be part of a group that's just a little bit different than the normal groups. Number one, it provides a tribe of people who are, have similar interests, so you can um, and bounce ideas off of and get new ideas, so I think it's valuable. It's just a camaraderie. I love the group, absolutely love it. Um, every exhibition that comes up that is a call for artists to apply it just it just makes you want to stretch yourself a little bit farther and we're a very supportive group um, there's just a lot of creative um, talent and, and but yet everybody is very humble and willing to share their ideas and their techniques and I you know you couldn't you couldn't come up with a better group of people mm -hmm.